Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you're having yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. But it's time. It's time for our pre-market watch list report. I think today's Palm Sunday, isn't it? And then next week is uh, Good Friday. Yep. So going to be an interesting uh, week to see how things go here. But I'm not going to hold you. You know, I don't like to hold you long on these um, on these additions. But uh, a couple of announcements. We got things that are in, a lot of irons in the in the fire right now. Things going on. Got some uh, future webinars and things like that coming up. Uh, those that are members, you know, are there. Uh, you, we have the live question answer session when we break off uh, into our private chat. You can ask questions. You can get help with placing orders and all that good stuff. And you will also notice uh, if you log into your dashboard right now, you'll notice that uh, all of the reports have been posted. All right. Especially the one that we use here for these watch list videos, which is Dex's watch list. It has been modified. Um, I've narrowed some things down. I'm only watching a handful of things right now. So that Dex's watch list will reflect the securities that I personally am watching and trading at, at, at this time. Um, moving forward. Also, the, um, the scripts have been reworded on the reports. So when we talk about uh, positive and negative bot checks in these videos, when we talk about uh, rally and crash alerts in these videos, when we talk about positive and negative trend momentum readings, and when we talk about a market that is uh, pulse waving positive or pulse waving negative, uh, those are all now reflected in the reports. Okay. So when we go off camera and you're, you know, on your lonesome looking through the reports and you can literally go back and watch the video and you can follow along with the report. You can see where I said there was a positive or, ne or negative bot check uh, today. You'll see that alert indicated on the report. All right. So, uh, took a while to finally get that all uh, sorted and it is now. So that is reflected on tonight's report. Also, for those that ask for uh, some extra um, securities to be added to the uh, U.S. equity report, those have been done. Those stocks have been added. Uh, just a note here, as far as adding, uh, you know, equities to the report or any security for that matter, the the algo the way it works is it doesn't matter if a security has been out for 20 years or 20 days if it doesn't meet the system's requirements and parameters that new security although added will not show up on the report you will not see that new security show up on the reports until it meets the system's requirements to do so. All right. And there is a very complicated uh, selection process for that. So we don't just so oh, let's trade this new coin because it's available, this new stock that just came out. No, if it doesn't meet the system requirements, it will not start reporting and showing up until those requirements are met, no matter how long that takes. So although I have no issues or problems adding, uh, you know, new stocks, just know that if it until it meets the system's requirements, no matter what security it is, it's not going to show up. All right. So just FYI, I, I get that sometimes people say, yeah, you say you added it, but I don't see it in the report because it doesn't meet the system's requirements. All right. So if that is uh, an issue or situation that you have found, you're not crazy. It, it, it and it, it was added it's just not reporting because it hasn't met those requirements so just wanted to uh, bring that up all right i've rambled long enough let's get into uh what you came here for let's see what's going on with the say of the markets it's been a very interesting year to start off with all right so first and foremost we're going to start with theta here all right so theta has been consolidating north of the Kumo cloud. All right. And you hit this incredible run here. 
And so the market's been trying to work off a actual corrective state. And it looks to be about just about finishing that up. It's in the process of trying to sort that out. So nothing is really happening yet. Just a lot of flip floppage up here, which you should expect. But when you look at where we are, it makes sense. And I think you're pretty much just about there. Uh, I think you're going to stay above the $2 mark. I think that that $2 is that psychological threshold. As long as this market can can stay above that uh, and finish out this correction with a nice base, I think you'll you'll have a good argument for this market to resume the rally and for the new 52-week highs to be uh, in sight. Now, what gives hope for that, the first time the rally alert, it failed immediately. The next day, you got a crash alert instead. And then you got downside production. Then the market failed on that and flip-flopped again, gave you a rally alert. And then here we go over the weekend from Friday till now. Now the market is doing absolutely nothing. However, the last rally alert is still in effect, and you have a bullish trend momentum reading. So what does all this mean? Well, you have a bull market, and you have a bullish trend momentum reading, which means uh, you're in a locked-in bull market again. Even though it's in a corrective state, it's still a locked-in bull market. So what you're doing is waiting patiently for the next opportunity to get long. So if you missed this rally alert here, or you missed this rally alert here, or you missed this rally alert here, and you missed all of this, you're waiting patiently for the next buy-in, okay? So set tight. If you are looking uh, to get long the theta, your turn will come. Next up is your XRP Ripple. XRP Ripple is also now uh, in a locked-in bull market. You got the bullish trend momentum reading here, okay? And then you have your bull market down here. And you had your rally alert coming into Friday. You got no upside production as of yet. So like theta, you're just waiting here. The market is consolidating, but it's at the bottom end of the range here. It's near the support, the base of the range. This is your bar right here. This is your consolidation bar right here. All right. Price action, for the most part, is going to behave and stay within that. So as the market ebbs and flows between support and resistance, it's going to continue to do that until it's ready to vacate the area. We don't know if it's going to vacate south or if it's going to vacate north. What gives us the clues of what it's going to do is because it's still north of the Kumo cloud, number one. And number two, you got the bullish trend momentum reading. So that should help you. And as long as you don't have any um, any you know sell signals that come up here, for the most part, you should be okay. Now, there is some soft bearish algo shifts here all right and those are not to be um you know taken literally you watch them just to see if anything develops but for the most part those generally don't develop and you'll know that because the system on your report will not reflect that you'll notice that the system will say nope stay long we're not afraid of it all right so that's okay but then there are times too where the system's like, well, this one may or has the potential to lead to something. So be be cautious and the system will alert you to that. All right. So XRP Ripple, sort of just like Thetis in the same camp. You're consolidated here, but you're at the lower end of the range. So you have some people come in here and try to defend this and wait for it to come back up here and then say, oh, I'll go ahead and take profit and, you know, wait, watch once repeat. And that's OK, too. If that's if that's your game, then that's fine. Uh, but I, I prefer to wait until the market's trending. It hasn't been trending for a very long time, as you can see here. Just little spikes, and that's it. All right, so your Zcash, or ZEC, uh, the trend has reclaimed the price action. You're in a bear market, and you got a bearish trend momentum reading here with a crash alert for Sunday night into Monday's trading, thus invalidating this positive bot check the day earlier, or should I say Thursday? So yeah, this one, it just can't get out of its own way, it seems like. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. But you are north the Kumo cloud, but it looks like the bear market rally is over. Now, I know 
those that have bullish uh, sentiments are saying, well, you're north of the Kuma cloud. So perhaps this pull on this pullback, this will be defended and then we'll bounce and go higher. That is that is a possibility. But right now, you got to go by what the market is telling you. What, this, what the market's telling you right now is that the market is not uh, ready to do that or primed to do that. It's bearish. So what you'll be looking to happen next is for this top of the Kumo cloud support to be violated, to be broken. And over an extended period of several days for the market to break out of the Kumo cloud south and come back down here and threaten to take out the 52 week lows. All right. So I know bear bad news. Don't mean to be on the weekend, but Hey, all right. Next up U S dollar. What about this dollar? Well, here you go. I hate to say, I told you so, but here you go. So the dollar professionally navigated the vortex here. This is one of the most destructive parts of a price chart because when you get to this vortex here, it usually drags the price under when it gets close to it and you drop below the Kumo cloud and it just sucks the life out of the market, regardless of trend. But that's not what happened here. What happened here is the market successfully navigated that and the positive bot check played out over time instead of giving you just one big bar one day bar up parabolic bar it did it over several days then you had this rally alert here and then you got the upside production so even though you have bearish algo shifts happening here right north of this kumo cloud it's being invalidated because of the bullish trend momentum reading. So the bear market rally is still underway and is powering up. Think about it. The U.S. dollar index got knocked down to the 102 handle right into the vortex and failed to get sucked out of it. And instead rallied back to 104. That's a monster move for the U.S. dollar index. All right. Again, I I still fear that there are people that are not getting the message that this dollar won't die. It just refuses to give up. And it is still the world's reserve currency. All right. And the next question you should be asking yourself, because there's a lot of naysayers out here talking and smack about Bitcoin, too, now. Because it pulled back from the 70,000 high. But I was the first one to tell you that the 70,000 was coming in the first place. And then I warned you about what was going to happen in the, in the process. Well, I'm warning you again. Remember, when Bitcoin was really uh, going hard, when it was really, you know, before it even hit that 60,000 for the first time, remember that? How I showed you the correlation between Bitcoin and the U.S. dollar. People thought I was crazy and out of my mind, but every video I showed you every day how Bitcoin was correlated to the U.S. dollar. That wasn't an accident, folks. <clears throat> it's not an accident. It's not a mistake. Why do you think that out of all the crypto coins, altcoins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of those, why do you think the first futures contract was on Bitcoin itself? Why do you think that the New York Stock Exchange, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Cargo Board of Trade, every exchange you can think of on the face of the earth, why do you think that they will be willing to pour millions of dollars of their money and government money, federal money, because the central bank is involved, why do you think they would do that if they didn't have some other nefarious plans to go with it? You see, while everyone's trying to find a new currency to dethrone the dollar, the central banks have been very, very clever. What they have done is they have now linked their U.S. dollar index to the Bitcoin benchmark. <laughs> it's not the other way around. So if you were wondering and you scratching your head, you can't figure out why the dollar just, just won't die already because it's not supposed to. 
it has Bitcoin backing it up now. Just thought you would like to know that little tidbit of information. So are we going to 108 in the U.S. dollar? Yeah. Eventually that's going to happen. And then to 114. And then to 122, 123. And then the 140, 150, maybe even 160, maybe even one, heck, maybe even over 200. And I know people don't want to hear that. But there is a unwritten rule in these markets that I've been trying to instill in people for over a decade now. And do you know what that principle is? That principle is the more things decay, and break down economically and financially, the higher asset prices will rise. We're at a 40K Dow now. Myself, along with the late, great Charlie McGrath, back in the early 2010s, we told you that that was going to happen. And we were laughed at. And then here you here you go now with Dow at 40,000. Yeah, a 40K Dow in your face. And what's happening around it? Well, you got unemployment. You got all types of financial Armageddon going on. You got, you got hyperinflation. They say, oh, hyperinflation will never happen. A recession will never happen. And here it is happening. Okay, so... I'm going to say it one more time. The worse your personal finances get, the worse the economy gets, the higher asset prices will go, thus taking the U.S. dollar along for the ride, and your Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, and Russell will eventually continue to climb forever. And you just need to be aware of it. All right, so with that being said, here you go. Bullish trim momentum reading. Bear market rally is still intact in the U.S. dollar. Next, let's take a look at gold. So gold is still heavily consolidated up here. Heavily. Bearish trim momentum reading. But you're not getting any downside production. The, mar the, the market refuses to help you out up here. And so people are hanging on to their long positions. And they are keeping hope alive. But you had a crash alert here. Which can lead the market three to five days out. And then what happened? Nothing. Which is rare. No downside production. No follow through. Then you get another crash alert. What happens? Nothing. No downside production. No follow through. Then on Friday, what happens? Nothing. Ah, but something did happen. You got a bearish trend momentum reading with a negative bot check. What does that mean? It means that a big down leg a cometh. Will it do it in a one shot or two shot? Or will it do it trickling a little here over time and eventually get your way down here into this vortex and then south of the Kumo cloud and drop back down below 2000? We don't know. But we do know that this negative bot check is in effect. And it's going to happen. So what should you do? Wait and buy your time. I wouldn't be trying to buy up here. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is a this is a dangerous area right here. And with this this negative bot check and back to back crash alerts, that means this down leg this coming is going to be a doozy. But hey, don't take my word for it. Do what you got to do. I just figured I'd point it out to you. All right, so then if that is what's going on there so then the next question will be well then what does this have to do with the dow what, what is the dow looking like well your dow gave you a crash alert on friday the, <laughs> the question is is it going to do is it going to correct this time or is this going to pull back we don't know but this crash alert is concerning i would not be trying to buy the dow 
Sunday night into Monday with a crash alert. No, ma'am, no, sir. Kumo Cloud is right here near near 38,000. That's a 2,000 point drop. Mm, you can go ahead and do that, but I'm not. Then the next question is, well, then what about the S&P? The S&P gave you a crash alert on Friday as well. I'm just saying, where is the Kumo Cloud? The Kumo Cloud here is south of 5,000. Mm, I wouldn't be trying to go along there either. Well, then what about the Russell My Hustle? Surely the Russell is saying something. Yeah, another crash alert, this time up here. So this little technical bounce failed, and now the bears came in and sifted it out. You had a bearish trend momentum reading this whole time, and the bears weren't fooled. They came in and started shorting and defending that resistance point. Where are you going now? Right here. All right. This is where you're coming down to this week. Be forewarned. And you'll say, well, what about the mighty NASDAQ, huh? The mighty NASDAQ is not showing that. I beg to differ. Crash alert in your NASDAQ for trading Sunday night into Monday. Yeah, where might we go? Right here. Right back down here. And then to the top of the Kumo cloud here. That's sub 18K. That's several hundred points below where it closed on Friday. And if you need further confirmation, here's your mighty NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA rallied on Friday, gunning toward the 52-week highs right here. NVIDIA just won't quit. A lot of you are hoping that this consolidated pattern here that looks very similar to gold, that this is what gold will do for you. But it's not. NVIDIA is right now in a, its own lane. It's running because it is a juggernaut of tech. It is providing the chips, the microchips, the, the technological infrastructure that you need to build out all these AI infrastructures and interfaces. So it makes sense that NVIDIA would continue to go to the moon. Who knows how high it can go? It can become a $30,000 stock. Who knows? But at some point, yeah, it will correct. It's just not doing it right now. And it's only one component of the NASDAQ. So one stock is not going to be able to move an entire market, but it will keep the markets from doing anything too crazy. All right, we're finishing up here. Here is Bitcoin futures. See how messy you get up here with these resistance points? All right, you got flip floppage, you got all types of stuff. But at least you came into this with a rally alert. You haven't gotten any upside production, but at least you got the bullish trend momentum reading. So you're in a locked in bull market still in this Bitcoin. All right, so you're waiting now for the breakout to come, and it should come this week. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. All right, but right now, I wouldn't be trying to short the Bitcoin here. No. Not with a locked-in bull market. I would not. And I wouldn't advise you to do it either. Here's your Ethereum, last chart of the day. And just like the Bitcoin, you had your rally alert, no upside production as of yet. But you got the bullish trend momentum reading in the bull market, which is a locked-in market. I wouldn't be trying to short this here either. I'll be waiting for my next signal to come. All right, folks, that's it. I'm hoping you're having a wonderful weekend. I'll let you get back to it. We're going to break off to our private session now for our members. If you need help placing orders or have any questions, this is the time to do that. And to the rest of you, remember, smash the like button, share, subscribe, all that good stuff if you haven't already. Remember, the system works if you work the system. Bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. And I'll see you guys in the next one.